Good morning. Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to Willow Creek Presbyterian Church. I'm Lauren, the pastor here, and we are so glad that you are joining us for worship this beautiful Easter morning. Um, I do have a few announcements I want to bring your attention to. Some of them are also in the bulletin. Um, for one, we will be celebrating communion later in the service. We, are, um, we have our brown bag communion still. So there are trays in the back, and so hopefully you had a chance to pick up a brown bag um, as you came in. If not, if you'll just kind of wave, one of our ushers will gladly bring that to you. And if you are worshiping with us online, maybe just take a moment and find something to represent the bread and the cup so you can celebrate with us later in the service. As we celebrate communion today, we will welcome um, Pastor Tanya Muzzarelli. Um, she and her husband have been worshiping with us these past few weeks. She is a retired commission lay pastor. Um, and there's some more information in the bulletin about the, the different places that she served. Um, and we are just so grateful that they have been worshiping with us and grateful for her leadership in worship today. A few other announcements. I do just want to say thank you. We've already had just a wonderful Easter. Thank you to the youth for their help in leading the sunrise service. Um, thank you to Steve and Penny for preparing the chapel for the sunrise service. Thank you to the session and to Ed, the pancake maker, for our wonderful breakfast. Um, many, many hands went into all of these things, and I'm just so grateful for everybody pitching in. And I want to thank Liz and Tom for all the wonderful music throughout Lent and into today, and thank all of our ringers um, with their fearless leader, <laughs> Diane, <laughs> and the many hours of preparation y'all have put in. Um, so thank you all so very much for just a wonderful Lent and Easter. Um, I will be on vacation, <laughs> unrelated, <laughs> I will be going on vacation next week. Um, there is a note in the bulletin with April Rotman's contact information. Oh, you're, you, you're supposed to be sitting over there. <laughs> She's up here. Um, she will be on call for pastoral care emergencies um, if you need that information. So keep this bulletin with you in case you need to reach out to her. I will be back by next Sunday, though, um, and I hope you'll all be back as well because Marin Reed will be preaching next Sunday, and we are so thankful and looking forward to that. Are there... Oh, I also need to thank the Christian Ed folks for putting on our egg hunt. I don't want to forget that. That was a lot of fun this morning. Other announcements and prayer requests? Yes, Rebecca. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. Thank you for that clarification. I, I was, yeah, I was wondering that myself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Other announcements? <laughs> Lucas has one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to share a proposal that I presented to session recently. The following proposal was approved at the April session meeting to address the interests and requests of several members of the congregation of Willow Creek Presbyterian Church. I propose that session approve and support efforts to create a school of piping and potentially drumming that would regularly meet at Willow Creek Presbyterian Church. The building and, buildings and grounds would be used to offer instruction, rehearsal space, and a place for fellowship. The instruction would initially be provided by myself. Meeting days and times will be mutually agreed upon by the instructor and those expressing interest. The church calendar and existing church activities will be taken into consideration to minimize and or prevent competing schedules. To address opportunities for outreach, inclusion of the greater community will also be considered. Our missions, mission and goals are to offer tuition in bagpiping and Scottish drumming in an inclusive environment to members of Willow Creek Presbyterian Church and others within the community. We will provide music acceptable to worship and celebrations, will honor the traditions of the music and the church, and will spread joy and fellowship through music. If this sounds like an opportunity you'd like to take advantage of or someone you know would be interested in, please talk to me. More information will be in the June streamer after the schedule is solidified. I predict a June starting date with opportunities for others to start whenever they are available or whenever they feel the bagpipe itch. <laughs> Thank you. The bagpipe itch, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucas. We are all very excited to welcome the school of piping and maybe drumming. 
Um, so if you're interested, check in with Lucas. Are there other announcements or prayer requests this morning? Oh, yes. That's right. Roger's birthday is on Tuesday. We, yes, we won't ask how old he is. <laughs> we didn't have to ask. Yes. I, Beth? Oh, happy birthday to Will as well. Are there other birthdays before we sing together? Can we, how about Case's birthday? Oh, Cruz is tomorrow. And Case, baby Case was born on Monday. Yeah, six days old. Um, yes? I do. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Um, Emmett's birthday is today. He's turning one as well. And if y'all hopefully saw the announcement, you're welcome to come celebrate. I said party. Celebrate with us this afternoon over at the manse. Marin? Mike Landy's birthday is This is a popular, lots of Easter babies. Mike Landy's birthday. Ed Rotman also had a birthday. Wow. I, I've already lost count. Okay. Are there any more, though? We need to celebrate all of you. Okay. Let's see. All right. Other announcements or prayer requests this morning? Will you join your hearts with me in prayer? Holy Risen One, we are so grateful to gather here to worship, to have so much to worship this day. May we remember and believe that you make all things, even us, new. Make us new. May we leave here more like you. Amen. Please rise and join me in our call to worship. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. The stone has been rolled away. Christ is not in the tomb. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us worship God. Let's remain standing and sing together hymn number 232, Jesus Christ is risen today.
On this Resurrection Sunday, we confess our freedom from sin and proclaim our thanksgiving for baptisms. Please join me in the printed words in your bulletins. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right in the thanks and praise. O Lord our God, we give you thanks for the new life you raise up in through the mystery of our baptism. Sorrow of heavy, the sorrow of the heavy cross, the surprise of the empty tomb, and the love that death cannot destroy. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour it out upon us in baptism. Fill us with the joy of resurrection, so that we may be a living sign of your heaven and new earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us share peace of Christ with one another, saying, May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Will you join your hearts with me in prayer? Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen world. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Today's first scripture reading begins on page 1164 in your view Bibles. Isaiah 65, verses 17 through 25. Listen for God's word. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I'm creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall shall there be in, in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build another inhabit, they shall not plant another eat. For like the days of the tree shall the days of many people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the, serp- the, but the serpent, its food, shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain says the Lord. Holy wisdom, holy word.
God's children said, Amen. Amen. And I'd like to invite the children to come join me on these first couple pews for a children's moment. I'll gather. There you go, Finley. Make it work. <laughs> there you go, Carly. Make it work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have 13. That's perfect. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. Did you have fun at the egg hunts? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Too much candy. Too much candy. Oh, so. I had too much, but okay. He said so much. There's never too much candy, and that's the whole sermon. I mean, we can go home. Yes. <laughs> yes. So last week was Palm Sunday, and some of you were here last week, and some of you who weren't here might know there's a special word we shout on Palm Sunday. Does anybody? Hosanna. Nice. Hosanna. I think you weren't even here, and you knew it. Yes. Wonderful. That's right. Hosanna. Does anybody remember what Hosanna means? Very good. Yes, Ruth and Nathaniel. Thank you. Save us. And that's the thing that we shout on Palm Sunday as Jesus is entering into Jerusalem as we're getting into all the things that are Holy Week. We're saying, God, save us. Last week, we talked about some of those things that we're asking God to save us from, things like being sick or being hungry, or we know there are places in the world where being thirsty. Thank you. Today also has a special word. What's today's word? Hallelujah, yes. What is hallelujah? Those are funny words. Hosanna, hallelujah. What does that mean? Yeah. I think so. It kind of feels like that, doesn't it? Say it with me. Hallelujah. How does that feel? Weird. That's what I'm getting on the faces. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But it's a happy shout. This is the day where we are so happy because Jesus did everything he said he was going to do. And all those things that we are crying out, save us from, we are now saved from. We're going to read some more about that in just a minute. Argyle is going to read us another story from the Bible. And I have some sticker sheets. So as you listen to the story that Argyle reads, the story that makes us shout hallelujah, maybe you can see if you hear about some of these characters and something like this big stone, something special happens with the stone, and you can put it together on your sticker sheet as you listen. Some of you are maybe are gonna have to share or donate your sticker sheet to a, a, younger, a younger kid. Are we cool with that? Okay, all right, so, well, here we go. Let's... <laughs> yes. In fact, Carly, can I put you in charge of Yes, and I will say a, a prayer while you do that. Okay, join your hearts with me in prayer. God, thank you for giving us reasons to shout hallelujah. We praise you for all that you are and all that you have done. And we pray we might believe a little more, might see a little more what you're doing in our world, and might join you as you are making things new. Amen. Amen. All right, thanks, y'all. Thank you so much. Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12, beginning on page 1,642 in your few bubbles. Listen again for God's word. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. 
But when they went in it, they did not find the body. While they, while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here, but has risen. Remember how Jesus told you, while still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified on the third day and rise again. Then they remembered his words. Returning from the tomb, they had told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, and the mother of James, and the other woman with them who told this to the apostles. But these words appeared to them an idle tale, and they, not, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the days following the crucifixion, I wonder what memories were shared. Did they remember the healings, the feeding miracles, the parables? Did they remember the first time they saw Jesus, the first time they heard him teach? Did they remember the first time they believed enough to leave behind nets and boats, home and habits, family and friends? Did they remember the first time they believed the former things were to be forgotten because God was creating a new thing before their very eyes? They came to believe that Jesus was the Son of God, the long-awaited Messiah. How absurd. They came to believe that the one born in a manger fulfilled the promises they'd hoped for and provided the hope they needed. How ridiculous. They came to believe so many nonsensical things, that Jesus was a teacher and also a storyteller whose words take root and shape lives. Jesus was a friend and also a revolutionary welcomer. Jesus was a healer and a resurrector. They believed. So they left behind, followed, started over, became a part of, were baptized, and told others to risk their own lives by taking up the Hosanna cry. They believed. And then? The crowds shouting, crucify him. The cross with the mocking soldiers offering a drink of vinegar. The crying out, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. The end. Surely this was the end. All the things promised, all the hopes of what would be, all the dreams of the new heaven and the new earth ended. They had believed so many impossible things and left everything behind to follow this promise maker and promise keeper, and now it seemed promise breaker. They had nothing to return to, so they turned to one another to try to make sense of all they had seen and all that remained unseen. And someone in the midst of grief would say, maybe, maybe it's still true, maybe there's a way, and the others would call them a fool. There is no way. The body is in the tomb, the tomb is sealed, it is finished. It is finished and we are in danger because we are known followers of the one crucified for being a disruptor. They had not actually believed that Jesus would die. The one who performed miracles, who split the heavens with a voice proclaiming, this is my beloved, the one who resurrected Lazarus, they did not think he would die. And yet, the one they thought they could never lose was lost. This is a devastating, life-altering, traumatic grief. 
They believed so many impossible things when Jesus was with them. But now? As they gather in grief and shock and fear, occasionally someone might whisper, what if? What if there is something more? What if there's a little hope left? Shh, hope is dangerous, the others would say. Hope in an impossible new way, new heaven, new earth, that is what got him killed. It cannot be. It wasn't so. He's gone. Now what? As grief settles in, one woman says to another, we have to care for the body. An admission of the reality, Jesus was in the tomb, the tomb was sealed, hope was extinguished. They gather their spices, and as the sun begins to shed impossible light on their shadowy world, they numbly make their way. How will we remove the stone, one asks. Perhaps God will make a way, another responds. A sob catches in her throat. She had seen the one she thought was God make a way out of no way so many times. She had seen impossible things and believed them. But now, belief feels beyond her, inaccessible. How indeed would they remove the stone? But then they arrived and found the stone rolled away. Perhaps God has made a way, someone whispers, and they look questioningly, daringly, hopefully, at one another. It's just the gardener or something, another says quickly, not ready to let hope take root, not ready to be disappointed again. But when they went in, they did not find the body. Did someone take it, one wails. Who would do such a thing? Would the soldiers remove the body and hide it to prevent them from giving honor, to prevent them from doing exactly what they are doing? Grief and confusion fill the empty tomb as they try to make sense of all that they have seen and now what they do not see. They are perplexed. And suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed to the ground, but the men said, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here, but has risen. Remember what Jesus told you. This was all promise. And perhaps they thought they believed it then when the promise was made. But it is such a nonsensical, difficult thing to believe. How could the little words of promise uttered by Jesus hold up under the weight of the sadness of what they saw, the pain they witnessed, the grief they experienced? But now, in the tomb where the body should be, the empty linens and dazzling messengers are instead, the words Jesus gave them appeared again in the center of their loss. They looked up and saw the beginning of hope on each other's faces. Jesus did say this, they remembered together, retelling the words to one another. Yes, he said the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, and that's what happened. Why didn't we realize? And then he said he would be crucified. We did not want to imagine it or believe it, but he did say it. And then on the third day, he would rise again. We could not understand that. After three days in the tomb, what rising could be possible? But he is not here. Maybe, maybe he is risen. He is risen. They hurry from the tomb to tell the others, daring to have joy on their faces, their words spilling over each other, trying to describe the indescribable. But to the others, these words appeared to them an idle tale, and they did not believe. An idle tale, an empty story. The tales Jesus told were anything but idle. His words held power, demanded reaction, created change. The words were the same. The women, burial spices still clutched in their hands, simply retold the promises, claiming they were actually true. He is risen. 
He is risen indeed. We went looking for him among the dead, but that is no longer a place to look because he defeated death. We went looking for the living among the dead, but the promise is true. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard or the cry of distress. We went looking for the living among the dead, and we found the cold stone emptiness filled with light and warmth. Grief transformed to possibility, despair transformed to hope, idle transformed to active. The women began the refrain we echo today, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Not because they saw the risen Christ, but because they saw where the body was supposed to be. Not because they saw what they expected, but because they did not see what should have been there. And messengers from God reminded them of the words of promise. Do you remember what was said? Together, they remembered. Just as we gather at this table of grace and break bread together and share the cup, we do this to remember, to be put back together. Whatever sadness or grief we have encountered, whatever difficult burdens we carry, we follow the example of the ones who gathered together in their despair and found that together their memories could retrieve the promises, the words their teacher and friend appeared again in the gathering, and they dared to wonder if maybe this was more than an idle tale. Maybe this was more than nonsense. Maybe these are words of transformative hope. And so it is for us when we gather at the table of remembering. There are those who, like the women, can shout, Christ is risen, and there are those who mutter the refrain. Christ is risen indeed. Because we are not completely convinced as we look around that there is so much yet to rejoice at. We are not quite convinced as we hear the sound of weeping and distress still that death of any kind has lost its sting. And yet that feeling was shared by some of Jesus' closest friends on the very first Easter like them, we can wait together at the table of grace and look around and say, do you remember the impossible promises of the Son of God spoke when he walked among us? The nonsensical promises that despair and weeping would be no more? The foolish promises of the new heaven and the new earth? This is no idle tale. It's the story that changed the world. How does it change us? What do we dare to hope to see made new? This is no idle meal. This is where Jesus last broke bread with those who thought they believed and where the resurrected Christ will find them again, trying to understand the nonsense of hope. This is where Jesus breaks bread with all betrayers and pours out mercy for all who seek the living among the dead. This is the tale of grace and the table of mercy, a tale of consequence, a table of revolution, a tale of hope, a table of Hosanna. This is not an idle tale, not inert, not fruitless, not empty. This is a table where we tell that not idle tale. May it move us again. May we be empowered by the broken and the poured out, by the community who says, do you remember? Do you believe? Sometimes we are the rememberers, and sometimes we need remembering. Sometimes we are the believers, and sometimes we need belief. All are welcome at this table where the tale is hallelujah because the stone has been rolled away the tomb is empty jesus is not here christ is risen christ is risen indeed christ is risen christ is risen indeed christ is risen christ is risen indeed alleluia amen Please rise and join me in confessing what we believe using the words from Philippians, which are printed in your bulletins. Christ Jesus, though he was in form of God, 
did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Let's remain standing and sing together hymn number 223, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. As the ushers come forward for the morning offering, let's reflect on those words. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. What is divine love compelling us toward this morning? How is God moving us to give of our time, our talent, our resources? As we take this time to reflect on that, let's also prepare our hearts and our elements for the offering. You can go ahead and remove um, your bread and cup from the brown bags.
Loving God, we are overwhelmed with all that you give, have given us. You faithfully provide even more than we could ask for. We give so that others may know your generosity and love and ask that you would speak through our lives so that others know your everlasting grace. Amen. It's a table where we remember all that has been made new and dare to ask again for resurrection. This is where Jesus broke bread and poured out the cup for faltering, following friends. This is where the resurrected Jesus appeared to those same friends. How does a resurrected one appear to us today? Are we rememberers or do we need remembering? Are we believers or do we need belief? This is a table for all of us, no matter what we carry, no matter what we need. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome here. You are welcome here. Please join me for the great Thanksgiving prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In every time and every age, O oh God, it is good and faithful that we give you thanks. For your mercy is sure, and your steadfast love endures forever. In your compassion you give us Jesus Christ, who sets us free from death and leads us to life eternal. And so with all creation, with all the needy and hungry ones, with all those who have enough and plenty, with creatures large and small, with sun and moon and stars, and with the saints of every age, we praise your name. Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things. By your power and love, you continue to deliver your people from oppression. Thwart the designs of evil, show the way through the wilderness, turn hardship into righteousness, and reveal your hand upholding the just. Blessed are you, O Christ, servant of the universe. You came among us to feed and heal and teach, to confound the haughty, to confuse the deceivers, to challenge the wrong-hearted, and in all these things, to give hope to those who long for peace. Blessed are you, O Spirit, giver of life, you give us words when we have none. You fill us with visions when we have the most need. You give us voice to proclaim our faith in every hour. Be our guide and teacher today and always. Come now, O Prince of Peace, spirit of love, breath of life. Bring to all this hurting world the joy that the women knew and teach us to proclaim with them the good news of resurrection. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon this bread and cup. Make us one in Christ as we have been buried with Christ by baptism into death. Raise us up by the power of your spirit to walk in new life. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, in gratitude for this great day of resurrection, we praise you, God of all that is now and forever. Amen. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table with those he loved. He took bread, blessed and broke it, and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, broken for you. When the supper was ended, he took a cup of wine and said, take this, all of you, and drink it. This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
We proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until Christ comes again, and Christ will come again. The gifts of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Will you join your hearts with me in prayer? Gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of this meal, you have opened our hearts and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. May we see what you see, and may we be empowered to make new what you long to have made new. May we offer love in the presence of grief, bread in the presence of hunger, shelter in the presence of need, peace in the presence of all who need it, and we all need it. May we feel free to confess our own needs and receive your goodness from the hands of others, even the ones we break bread with now. We seek your goodness and gratitude for your life, death, and resurrection, and join our hearts and voices with your faltering followers and faithful friends in every time and place praying the prayer you taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And this is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for thy name. Let's rise and sing together hymn number 245, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
It's no idle tale. It's the story that changed the world. How does it change us? What do we dare to hope to see made new? This is no idle meal. This is where Jesus breaks bread with all betrayers and pours out mercy for all who seek the living among the dead. This is the tale of grace, the table of mercy, a tale of consequence and a table of revolution, a tale of hope and a table of Hosanna. And also a tale and table of hallelujah, because the stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. Jesus is not here. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And now may the steadfast love of the Lord be yours this day and forever. Alleluia. Do not be afraid. Go and tell the good news to all. Amen.